Ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths Most Wanted, where today we are covering what I believe is the White Flayer's boss vessel, as in the thing uh, that you're not very likely to see, but if it does show up, it uh, has vast and beautiful potential to ruin your world-conquering plans. So this is the Redeemer, so... This is a big ship. That's the first thing you immediately notice about it. It is 1.4 million materials, uh, roughly like almost 25,000 blocks, uh, very big, and it is plenty scary. Did I pause the game? Yes, I did. Oh, silly, silly, silly me. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to get a screenshot. Anyway, so, um,. There's any number of reasons to be scared of this thing. Uh, it's got a lot of the usual uh, white flare nonsense. So, if we just hang out on it. Uh, very big, very spiky, uh, very spammy. It spams guns and missiles, stuff like that. Um, in particular, like its main guns are big, pure kinetic rail guns. So if we do this... Oh, so much deco work on this. It's quite, it looks pretty beautiful. Who made this thing? G3. Well done, G3. This thing is cool. Uh, so, if we look here, we've got uh, 271 uh, millimeter guns, rail guns, rotational symmetry around there. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Ah, interesting. Uh, looks like uh, we've got three sets of them. 271. And it's here. Really should look at this in more detail, but... We've got another one over there, and we've got one more over here, which appears to be the same as the other ones. Yes, yes it is. So if we go back here, we can show off what kind of shells this thing is packing. And for one thing, Railgun uses 30,000 uh, rail power per shot uh, to launch this thing. So this is about as pure Railgun as you can get. So if we go here, accurate numbers, and 271 millimeters. That's not right. What? That can't be right. That can't be right at all. What? That can't be, that really can't be right. I'm confused. Oh, it's because I typed in the wrong thing. There we go, that's more like it. Um, so yeah, almost 2,000 uh, meters per second. Ridiculously high armor penetration. This is, uh, this is excessive actually, 85.6. There's no armor, there's no block in the game that has, uh, I think above 60 armor? Uh, yeah, like, heavy armor has 60 armor, and that's about as high as it gets. Uh, yeah, so these will go straight through most things. Um, uh, no chemical charge, but kind of like, it doesn't really need it. It'll poke massive holes through uh, just about anything you care to name. And that's not enough uh, piercing, apparently, because it has a side-mounted battery of particle cannons. So you see in here it's got vertical lenses uh, set uh, on their side and looks like yep it's got an input port so these things are uh, got decent range. What net damage do they do? Damage of about uh, almost 23,000 each so those are pretty hefty particle cannons and they are set to piercing and they really hurt. Uh, they can poke has significant holes in most things, and it has uh, it has some more of them. Uh, let's see, where is it? What is it? Set? This is set to EMP. It's got uh, two EMP crams just there because you know why not, and two more over here. So this thing really doubles down on uh, battery power destruction, and this thing is murder on submarines as a direct result because the. Uh, the particle cannons just kind of tend to fry submarines very quickly, uh, but that's uh, that's not all. It uh, the fun does not stop. Let's go see if I can find the missile silos. Aha! Here they are, big missiles, large missiles at the very least. Um, oh, interesting. It's got remote guidance and it just goes uh, all out uh, on the fragmentation. Uh, so these things, like it, you can't 100% uh, defend. Uh, yourself from this thing's missiles just with the flares uh, you need other things as well you need uh, active defense that destroys incoming missiles uh, or you need uh, the 
uh, this block right here, the signal jammer, in order to deal with these big missiles. Because having a look here, what, this, what angle is this set to? Oh yes, great, they're piercing. And um, yeah, 14,000 damage per fragment. Yeah, these things are going to tear massive holes in you if you are not uh, ready. And once again, the fun does not stop because... Let's see, where can I go find it? Oh yep, here they are. Here they are. It's got even more frag penetration. It has... Uh, yep, it has penetrating uh, frag torpedoes as well. So same story, lots of damage per fragment. Uh, I use these things myself, actually. Um, uh, generally, HE is better for torpedoes because they get that underwater explosion buff. Uh, but I never underestimate a large uh, penetration frag torpedo because it reaches very deep inside uh, enemy craft and can rip holes straight through it and out the other side which as well as being effective in combat is really cool and defense wise uh, this thing has a quite a significant distraction stick and uh, let's see where are you hiding that distraction stick uh, which is basically just where is it where is it where is it, where is it? i want it i want it now it's been a while since i've looked at this thing actually where is aha here you are thank goodness for shrinking the block fuse so here we have a large missile and it's got a lot of radar target simulators, got the harpoon, so uh, usual uh, story, we've got this, and let's see, it doesn't work, um, but it's okay. Uh, but yeah, this thing has a significant uh, radar uh, simulator signal strength, so it tends to pull a lot of radar guarded missiles, even if they have uh, signal processes on them. Uh, so this thing's not easy to flatten with missiles, and... Um, it also has a LAMS, by the way, which is really rude for uh, a white flare craft. So here it is. It's a it's a pretty significant LAMS. It's very tightly packed. Look at that. So uh, making use of single input cavities to just go absolutely ham. This is interesting Tetris. I need to steal this, actually. Kind of rotational symmetry type thing. Ooh, fancy. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this LAMS is uh, pretty strong. Let's go, let's go find the... Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Uh, multi boops laser. Sustained damage per second is over 7,500 with 60 AP. Um, let's go check uh, the lambs nodes. I want to see quickly if they are doing what I think they're doing. They don't have the fire within smoke, so smoking them does shut them down. Um, but it does mean uh, that it can... Also, wow, that fills really quickly. Uh, you're not going to exhaust this lambs um, very easily. Uh, where, 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 where was I? It's also got a railgun seaward, so uh, this thing back here, uh, this is a, this looks like, nope, it's not a dedicated seaward, it's uh, both, it's got uh, both a local weapon controller and a seaward controller. Let's see what this main rule set is. Interesting, lock target rule set. Huh, it's got basically no rules on it. Interesting. But yeah, this thing chucks uh, this thing chucks a lot of railgun rounds uh, downstream. So let's go here, armor-piercing head, uh, just maximum amount of kinetic damage. So let's see here, 50 millimeters, and let's go using a 900 a rail draw. I suspect. Uh, so yeah, it does pretty significant damage. It's got a little bit too much AP for uh, shooting uh, projectiles, but hey, it does the trick. It I uh, it eats missiles uh, quite readily. So again, uh, not easy to destroy to just cheese this thing with missiles. It's got plenty of missile defense. Uh, speaking of, it's also got plenty of torpedo defense because it is just ugly with torpedo interceptors. It's got so many of these things. Look. So, Missile Interceptor, APN Guidance, Fins, Torpedo Propeller, it's got one battery there, it's got another one uh, over here, same type, it's got even more of them over here. Um, who made this again? Uh, G3 apparently was very paranoid about torpedoes, and which is understandable really. Um, you do tend to find that things like this, things that are so big, um, uh, sonar decoys, uh, like sonar distractions and all that stuff, they don't work very well with them because the thing has such a huge sonar signature and it's hard to reduce it. So yeah, like, I've done this myself. Um, on very big ships, I don't even bother with trying to distract torpedoes, you just shoot them. And since they're slower, they're actually, uh, you've got a lot more time to shoot them dead, so that works. 
Uh, it's also got wedge armor, so I keep mentioning wedges in armor schemes, and this is an example of how to do them. This is quite clever, actually, because um, it's got these two meter metal wedges uh, here, there, and everywhere. Not uniformly, just um, uh, protecting like the, the turret wells and stuff like that. Uh, actually, this one. Oh, that's an engine. Where's this? Turret. And let's see here. Is there. Where's the other turret? Here's the other turret. Yeah, so it's protecting the turret mainly. And can confirm this works pretty well at uh, uh, holding off kinetic damage. So, for anyone watching who uh, doesn't realize, uh, the more a block slopes, uh, the less uh, kinetic damage it takes. Uh, so, shot set to ricochet off this. And because these things are backed by heavy armor, I do believe. Uh, let's see. Lock AP. Let's go here. There's this gap here. Uh, the AC is 48, so it doesn't have max armor stacking, but it does uh, have more uh, than it would otherwise. So let's see here, there's heavy armor. Interesting. It's just got a little smidge more. But that's enough, 48. Uh, 48 AC right there. Plus the, uh, uh, the slope uh, kinetic damage thing. They're not easy to get through there with uh, penetrating shells, and I know that because I've tried. They did get through eventually, but it took a hot minute. Uh, it's also got lots of shields, so uh, let's go find a shield. Uh, shield, projector. Here's one, let's see, are you activated? It's at 4.5, so it's uh, not the strongest it can be. Whoops, let's go back out of all. Uh, but it does have good coverage, like um, broadsiding, it has Pretty darn good coverage all around. It's got the whole waterline covered, uh, so to speak. Uh, so, not super easy either with lasers or uh, with advanced cannons, or I guess any cannon really, uh, to poke holes in it. So, pretty significant active defense. In fact, it's got almost all the uh, active defense uh, you could have. You could got you've, it's got missile interceptors. Uh, it's got sea whiz, it's got lambs, it's got uh, flares, and it's got uh, uh, shield protectors. So, yeah, it also has smoke. So, where's the smoke? Here's the smoke. Uh, so, miss so lasers, well, you're not going to cheese this thing uh, with lasers either. Uh, it's generally just a big, scary, tough ship. Uh, very white flare. Very, very annoying. So, yeah, that's... Uh, it's got a lot of strengths, uh, so you might want to uh, crap your pants if you see this thing on the horizon. Uh, but it does have weaknesses. It um, has not many, but significant weaknesses. So, uh, one of its major weaknesses, and this might be just because of recent EMP changes in uh, Alpha Test, which is where we're hanging out right now. Uh, where's the AI? Uh, this thing is kind of vulnerable to getting its brains uh, fried by EMP. Uh, which might just be because of, like, you know, the new changes. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, so it is, uh, that's almost definitely because, because it's uh, got its AI compartment surrounded by heavy armor, and there do not appear to be a lot of surge protectors around here. I wish the block count mod still worked. Uh, that way I'll be able to tell you. But, yeah, just uh, a quick skim over. I'm not seeing many surge protectors uh, anywhere, so... That is a problem for something that's predominantly made of metal and alloy. So, uh, let's see here, let's see, let's, uh, yeah, so a good EMP surge uh, does take out the AI. And, do, do, ooh, interesting. Interesting. It's got ACBs um, that, make it, uh, that make it switch sides. Um, and when it takes damage, that's interesting. I like that. Uh, the other thing you would have noticed that is a kind of significant weakness is that it has a lot of propellers um, uh, underneath, uh, controlling roll and controlling uh, all kinds of stuff. So let's see here, what are you controlling? So it's got, oh interesting, it's pitch roll and uh, altitude. So this thing requires a fair amount of engine power in order to stay up, you can see here, uh, let's see here, kinetic energy used, let's see here, the max, uh, maximum power use is a thousand, so it's like, let's just have a look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 14,000 engine power just to stay up out of the water. So the second this thing loses any engine power, uh, it's gone, basically. Delete, 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 delete everything. Aha, there we go. Uh, yep, and we are... Dropping lower in the water as we speak. Not quite there though. Um, it doesn't rely entirely on engine power, I guess, uh, but uh, it has helium pumps as well, which generally don't do well uh, when the compartment gets ruptured. Uh, so yeah, this thing sinks quite readily once you put a few holes in it, in particularly through uh, the engine compartments. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Like, yeah, it seems to get AI dead reasonably easy. Let's uh, go through there. Let's find the AI. There we go. So let's now find out how much armor is in between this and the big scary outside world. We got heavy armor. Over here. We got a layer of alloy, and then we got interesting. Ironically, it doesn't actually have much armor. It doesn't have that uh, wedge arrangement uh, in between its AI compartment and the outside. So, let's see here. What do we got? We got one, two... Uh, we got two layers of metal. Um, I guess one and a half, really, and a layer of alloy. And then we got a layer of alloy. And then we got, at most, alloy. Heavy armor. And that's it. So... That's actually not a lot of protection um, for the AI compartment, and uh, beneath the waterline it hasn't got shield, so this thing does get AI dead uh, quite easily. There's not as much protection for the AI compartment uh, as I thought there'd be, or as you might expect for something that this is that this big and that's important. That is that important, Berg. I can talk today. All right. So um, how do you survive this? Well, apart from the obvious thing of just kill it before it kills you, uh, it is a big fat ship, so good luck with that. Um, one thing you can do is you stay in front of it. So it is a broadsider. It's not particularly fast, I should mention. It only goes about 70 meters per second. Uh, so if you stay out of what is it? Combat distance 1,200 and 1,000. So as so long as you stay further away uh, than that, um... Uh, the thing will just point its nose at you, and you can just circle it, and all that's coming to get you then is uh, this main uh, gun right here, and these two secondary packs uh, in the front, uh, plus the missiles. Actually, no, it's this secondary gun right here. But the main reason you want to stay in front of it is because these piercing packs uh, back here, uh, they hurt a lot, and you don't want to get shot with those if you can possibly help it. So this is a... This ship is a brawler. It, like, it gets in your face and shoots you. So stay away from it and you should, uh, you should at the very least do better. And you do need thick uh, kinetic resistant armor, so you kind of have to copy uh, what this thing does, actually. So, uh, like, in your armor scheme, you kind of stack uh, slopes or wedges or even poles, so... Uh, I'll just give you an example of the one I use. I tend to use poles a lot because poles are kind of um, idiot proof uh, because it doesn't matter what angle you shoot at them from, um, they would just get uniformly uh, reduced kinetic damage. And meanwhile, with uh, wedges, if you angle them uh, like so, uh, they all, they have very significant reduced kinetic damage, like from the front, uh, from the slope side, uh, but from the sides, um, there's no reduction at all. Meanwhile, with a pole. Uh, 360 degrees of um, uh, admittedly lesser kinetic reduction but it's nice and uniform so you can you kind of have more freedom um, like you know it, the angle of your ship isn't so tremendously important uh, because I find that you will get caught out uh, out of position uh, more likely than not because you don't always have fine control over what's happening so Example of the armor scheme that I use that actually works pretty well against uh, this thing is something like this. So, uh, two layers of metal, two layers of metal, and then just four layers of poles. Because uh, this is, um, actually there's a layer of uh, alloy in here as well, uh, just for extra floatiness. And um, this seems to stand up to those uh, railguns reasonably well. 
Um, so because it's just very thick and there's a lot of health to get through. So roughly 1700 and 1300, 1700, 1700, 1300, 1300, 1300, and uh, 1100. And then what was this again? Uh, 1700, 1700 again. That's quite a lot. And add on a heavy armor citadel and like you've got an armor scheme that can take those shells. And... Uh, having big combined missile defense, because uh, remember, this thing spams uh, missiles at you of uh, various kinds. It tends to put a lot of its own interceptors into the air as well. Uh, I think it does. Where does it have a surface interceptor? This thing's so big, it's hard to keep track of like what it's up to. Come on, what's on your deck? You've got your big missiles right there. You've got what else? You got? Yep, back here. It's got. Uh, it's got missile interceptors as well, because, you know, why not? Why not? It's got them. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, you can't use just flares, so you need to use lambs, you need to use sewers, you need to use missile interceptors, stuff like that, in order to take down uh, these large missiles here, because, like I said, these things hurt like hell if they hit you. Uh, and, uh, do remember that uh, this thing right here is an option, so it messes with... Um, like wireless connections of all kinds, uh, mainly remote guided missiles. But hey, it doesn't it doesn't hurt um, to mess with the wireless connections on this thing as well. And yeah, like I said, it's not fast. It's pretty easy to outrun. Uh, so if you can just uh, stay away from it and stay in front of it, or even behind it, actually, um, that could work as well. But just make sure it doesn't get close enough to broadside you, because then those piercing packs. Uh, put you in a world of hurt. Now, how do you kill it? Um, well, this is where I hop to the custom battle thing and I show you how to kill it. Uh, with my old favorite and just my favorite thing, really. Uh, let's go here. And teams, first of things first. I'm gonna show you what my thing is. Uh, we're gonna go with the Star Slung because the Star Slung beats this thing uh, quite handily. And let's go back over here, built in, meter, and white flares, and redeemer is right there. Alrighty, so we got that, and while these uh, two ships beat the hell out of each other, we can talk about uh, how we can kill it. So the first thing on the list is, since this is a big slow ship, and yes it does have a lambs, yes it does, it does have interceptors, yes it does have sewers, um... It is still uh, vulnerable to cram cannons. Also, this is what it looks like when it's not painted. Uh, Star Slung is immediately taken damage, which is less than ideal. Um, but yeah, you can see what a giant frag cram can do there. It's just basically disable that turret and put holes um, dangerously close to a particle cannon and stuff like this. And it's not just frag crams which do that. Like APHE it could really do a number on this, and you can see just the damage. We've already ruptured compartments, we've already gotten close to AI components. Put a hole uh, straight through uh, the wet space in the bottom of it, so... Uh, crams actually work pretty well against this uh, if you make it big enough. And what else works? There's shield and armor busting APS, anything that can... any kind of shell that can get through a shield very well. Uh, even if that just means spamming it. Uh, we'll do okay against this, and you can see I'm using just a big swarm of kinetic missiles uh, with um, a signal processors on them. Uh, you can get through with those. They're large missiles, mind you. Uh, you also need big torpedoes because this thing, as you can see, it is filling the whole wa it is filling the water uh, with uh, uh, with torpedo interceptors and. Um, Star Slug doesn't have a particularly large torpedo barrage, so it doesn't really rely on that. Uh, but if you want to get through uh, this thing's uh, torpedo uh, defense, you need a lot of torpedoes and uh, quite big ones as well. You also need big EMP jolts, uh, which the Star Slug doesn't really have. Uh, but it's enough to um, potentially AI dead this thing if it gets a missile in the right spot. Uh, or large particle cannons. It's just. Generally, uh, most things can work against this, but uh, they need to be of a magnitude enough to, to get through its defenses. Which is kind of obvious, really. 
Um, you can also use uh, high AP hollow point shells or chemical shells like heat and hash, because uh, that kind of well, hollow point completely counters uh, the wedge armor that it has uh, guarding its turrets. Um, and Heat and Hesh kind of soft counters it, because uh, they don't get reflected very easily and stuff like that. And make sure to try and pop the particle cannons early, um, because they do a significant amount of damage. So let's go see here. Uh, are the particle cannons getting popped? Uh, not really, those are still alive, so they're going to put uh, holes uh, through the star slime. And in fact, they would have... Yeah, so you see, uh, piercing is a problem. Uh, it is punching through uh, quite a significant amount of armor. Right there. And let's see, has it already disabled this front cram? No, it has not. Not yet. There you go, Stully. Actually, having a lambs uh, that's strong enough to damage those incoming shells that might work very well as well. And as you can see, okay, it's not AI dead by the looks of it. Or it might be. Sometimes the notification is a little slow. Is it AI dead? Nope, but something important has been uh, knocked out because it's not functioning anymore. Uh, it looks like an EMP jolt has taken out a pretty important component. Let's see here, where were you hiding your AI? I think it was over here. No, it wasn't. Here it is. Let's see here. Anything? Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Can't see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. But yeah, you can see that this thing sinks uh, remarkably quickly. And now, like, it's all over by the screaming, because I don't know what... I don't even know what happened there. Uh, an EMP jolt must have just kind of... Um, gotten very lucky and just zapped an important uh, piece of the AI uh, to essentially turn this off. And now just, uh, it's the secondary gun on the Star Slung that's uh, going to be <laughs> very slowly poking holes in this. Which is going to take a second because that gun isn't incredibly strong and this thing has good de kinetic defense. So yeah. That's basically how you beat the Redeemer. I was like, oh, you know, yes, that was it. It was an EMP torpedo. I forgot the Stully had those. Uh, yeah, so the Redeemer is, to be fair to the Redeemer, uh, this is one of pretty much all faction ships which were not designed uh, with current EMP mechanics in mind. So back in the day, this would have been a lot harder to just, you know, get its brains fried. Um, but these days, yeah, it's uh, distressingly easy. Uh, EMP is a little bit broken at the moment, uh, at least in alpha test. So yeah, that's basically how to take on the Redeemer, is um, beat it at its own game, or keep your distance and shoot it in the face a lot. And uh, on that jolly note, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Most Wanted. Farewell.